it is a pleasure to share this story. And I would like to start with a little bit of um, my story uh, in, in the sense of why Iowa. A lot of people say, usually Iowans go to California. Why do you come from California after being there 18 years? The truth of the matter is that my wife is from here, as you heard, but I consider myself from Iowa. I came as a foreign student, and I, for me, United States was, was Iowa. And I was with a host family for one year. I like it so much, I came the second year and the third year. So I had three families in Iowa, and I consider myself an Iowa boy in that sense. To the fact that when we got married, actually in the church, uh, uh, the, the chapel in, in Central College in Iowa, my side of the, uh, of the church was fuller than my wife because I had three families, she only had one. So after 30 years of coming every single summer, uh, we decided it's time to, to move, come to Iowa where we feel uh, this is our home. And I was blessed to well, not to find because they found me. A recruiter just contact me and start talking about this wonderful company that's been in Iowa for so many years, and they're the leaders in the industry and family business. And I was more used to large companies. Uh, I worked for Kyocera before I worked for Boral, and always traveling. Usually, my job was to travel different locations three weeks out of a month. I was out traveling, visiting locations, and if I needed to do something related to HR last minute, I'd just grab a plane and go. And I said, well, but maybe let's, let's explore a family business. I didn't have that opportunity. But interesting enough, I realized that this company is very unique because just 460 employees, and I, when I joined uh, the company three years ago, we were 360. Don't judge them by the number. Judge them by what they have done in our communities, because they are really focused on communities, uh, what they have done for the employees, and uh, they really function as a large company. And I can tell you that I see no difference managing uh, HR for a division of 15,000 employees versus 460. Actually, one of the things I want to start with, well, as you know, it, the company was introduced as uh, the leading um, source for accessories, ammunition, and all these parts. And even right now, 32% of our sales is accessories and parts for rifles and hot guns. So it is definitely still our main business. But this company, you may say, well, it's a distribution company. It's the mini Amazon of, um, of the gun industry. <coughs> but guess what? This company is worldwide distribution center. We distribute to 13 companies, and you're going to see how we grow there. So when we say, is your company in distribution, logistics? Yes. But it is a publishing company. You're going to see that Bob, who started this company, he was an avid uh, writer. And his first intent was to transfer knowledge for free and gather all the knowledge that the gunsmiths really needed, especially uh, after World War II when they were coming back. Uh, a lot of people uh, coming from the Army wanted to take care of their, their, um, their guns or wanted to be a gunsmith. So he always thought that his business was really to support the fellow gunsmiths. And he considered himself a gunsmith, and that's how he started. So he started publishing uh, tricks and tips in, in magazines, and you're going to see about that. He wrote about uh, specifications of a lot of guns that did not exist, or it was very hard to get. He published uh, uh, little tricks about how to do certain jobs. So he was a publisher. And as of now, we have grown with a lot of catalogs. And some gunsmiths consider this big book like the Bible of the gunsmith. That's where you can see all the parts and specifications. But we have about, about 10 different catalogs, from 1911 to AR-15. And we don't outsource that. 
we all do it in-house. So you may say, we are a publishing company, by all means. One of his books, I think, he is on the fourth edition, um, and some people just actually consider the, the oldest edition very valuable because uh, for uh, uh, antique firearms. Well, Bob started by saying, okay, we need tools, and they do not exist. So I'm going to design some tools and have it manufactured and then distribute to my fellow gunsmiths. We have 3,800 branded uh, tools or accessories under the Brownells name, which means we specify how they need to be manufactured. To the point that uh, now we manufacture uh, full guns, AR-15s, and we call it retro, because it kind of resembles those old style. And, and there was a journey to get here. Uh, you're gonna also going to see that um, when we started, you could put a gun together within our uh, website because it has so many parts. Uh, you can accessorize it. So basically, you, you can just do it yourself. But uh, we finally decided, let's do branded guns in 2016, Smith & Wesson, uh, Glock, and all those ones. And the natural progression was, well, what about Brunel's guns? Because we, we've been doing that with the parts. So uh, it was well received uh, last year when we started this, this project. So we're manufacturers, um, by all means, but we're also in retail. And retail was a strategic move, a very difficult one, because our clients are gun shop owners, shields, big box uh, you know, organizations in the industry. Are you going to look at, you're going to compete against them. So there was a lot of communication with them to understand the intent. Bob started by supporting the gunsmith community. But the company has evolved to support the whole industry. And this is one way to support the industry. Because we wanted to create an experience, a destination, actually a destination for Iowa. Uh, the, um, I think there is a tourist uh, agency organization in Iowa that has recognized that a lot of people now are coming to Iowa or making plans to stop uh, when they're traveling in central of the U.S. just to stop to this uh, retail store. Why? It's the only store where you have 90,000 accessories and parts available to you and guns and all that. You can actually go there and put a gun, your dream gun together, or you can buy some of the guns that are manufactured. So we wanted to create an experience, and this is just the first phase. It's a 7,000 square feet. Uh, it has a lot of scopes that you can see, more variety than any other store. Um, but we're going to quadruple. It's going to be at 28,000 square feet. And uh, it's going to have an indoor range and all that. So we wanted a place where people, especially the ones that don't know that much, but they have some kind of interest in understanding more about guns for whatever reason. They, they may be just for concealed carry, they might be just for hunting or whatever. Uh, they want to start. This is a place where you have gunsmiths on site and you have very knowledgeable people and you have a great variety. So we introduced that as a destination to support the industry. It's not that we're going to be opening retail stores all over the nation. Um, and, and that was the intent. So, but, but we are in retail. In a way, it's a whole different business. Training group. Actually, in the 80s, uh, the Brunel's family decided that it was very important to have knowledgeable people in, uh, and be a key differentiator. So we hired gunsmiths with a lot of experience so they could give support to other gunsmiths or a customer in general. And this group uh, trains uh, police and law enforcement so sometimes you get to one of our facilities and you're going to see a lot of sheriff cars and police cars. Nothing is happening. They're just being trained by Brunel's, you know, or in the range because we also have a range uh, um, uh, about five miles south of Grinnell. 
Um, we also uh, train them over there. Uh, we go to universities where they have gunsmith uh, um, programs. Uh, we actually donated money and, and, and went over gunsmiths, ran the program in the Iowa Valley um, gunsmith program in, in Grinnell as well. So we have a training group that that's basically what they do. And now, a few years back, we decided that part of training is created in a, in a media that actually is more accessible to customers, which is videos, video production. Some people that have come from the, um, from the TV industry have actually said the equipment that you have, you can only see it on movie companies. So it's very expensive, and the quality, you look at the quality, is just phenomenal. So we have a, a production department uh, with the setup, and they do the scripts and everything. And we also support the industry by providing as a co-op this service. So you see something from maybe Winchester, it might be Brunel's behind doing all this production. All our internet-based business is also setting a model that can support the industry. So we also provide that. And right now, uh, you know how uh, Google is, is statistics, analytics, and all this, how to uh, modify your website so there is a better experience for the customer. Well, that's what this group do, marketing. Not only for the company, but also for the support of the industry. Public relations. Well, we are in an industry that actually is very political. Uh, in also, um, we have a lot of uh, media trying to access uh, our company. So we do have to handle public relations with people that actually communicate properly and, and they're professionals in that area. So we're a public relations company. So any of this could be outsourced, but we do it in-house. So as I'm saying, it's like having a, eight companies in one. We're a manufacturing. We're in the public, uh, you know, public relations, production company, retail, distribution, uh, publishing. That is Brunel's today. But this is how it started. 1920s, 1930s, he had a, a shop, a sandwich shop and a gas station. And then in 1939, he started to, to, um, to work on guns, special, uh, you know, repairs and restoring guns. And so basically he said, well, that's going to be my third business kind of hobby uh, because he loved doing that. And that's when all started in 1939. So that's why we date this company when he opened that to other clients, very few. And he always was in Montezuma. So in 1943, he put his first ad about uh, a revolver that he has restored. So that was his first advertise ever. Then in 1944, uh, no, he advertised some salts that he realized they were the best in the market. And he bought it in bulk and took the rest to, to pack it in a smaller amounts for his clientele. And he went kind of national in that. Now, in 1947, uh, he had so many items already produced, tools, and that he uh, uh, did his first catalog. And why 1947 and not before? Because paper was very hard to get through World War II. So once things kind of became available, he did his first. And at that time, he said the first and only complete gunsmith supply house in the world. He went to, to make that bold statement, but I, I can guarantee you that nobody could say that this was not the most complete at that time. Some people have even said, if Brunel doesn't carry it, probably you don't need it. Yeah. Probably. That's kind of too much like, overextending it. And you can see, he created this uh, newsletter, the dope sheet, 
which basically gave some tips and tricks and how to do things. And he did for many years. And actually, this convert, was converted into a book, a uh, compiled version of all those uh, tricks uh, uh, that he was doing. Now, in 1951, uh, basically, he said, I got too much business on this. He closed the, every, everything, the, even his gunsmith shop, and then he just kind of created the, the distribution at that time. In 1951, he went full time as a distributor of accessories and parts. Uh, Jack Leg Journal and American Rifle, uh, that was another uh, of his uh, continuous articles, just giving tips and knowledge. Uh, so he continued to write. In 1954, uh, Walter Howe um, published an interview with him, and I think that's what, when he actually got some uh, nationwide recognition, always supporting the gunsmith. And he was making a, a statement on how difficult it was to be a gunsmith and how he was trying to support that industry. Just to give you an idea, um, 16 years later, he had about 10 employees. Not that many, and some were retiring at that time, and that was their Christmas uh, letter. 1957, he becomes an editor of Sporting Goods uh, Dealer Magazine. So again, we're an editorial uh, company, a publishing company. Uh, he also published the Encyclopedia of Modern Farms. This was a great accomplishment. Even today, like I said, uh, that is used for antiques uh, because he has all these specifications. You want to uh, replace a pen and you don't have any more access to the specifications, if you go to that book, most likely you'll be able to reproduce that part. Second generation, uh, Frank. Uh, he went to the University of Iowa and got an advertising and journalism degree. Uh, but soon right after that, uh, he graduated he married and went to the, to the Navy in 1961. And after three years, uh, he came back to the family business. And in 1964, he joined his dad to go to the next stage of, of the company. Now, to give you a perspective of the growth, in 1972, they, they were expanding. And um, they finally got a location, because they were in many small locations around uh, downtown Montezuma. This location was 4,000 square foot. And they thought, boy, we finally have a large location for, for our business. Uh, and it didn't last too long because in 1973, they had to build the, what you know now is the Brunel's location in Montezuma. And, uh, but just to give you some other reference of things that, that Bob and, and Frank have done, in 1964, uh, uh, Frank introduced the Latigo sling, which was very well accepted in the industry as well, especially for precision shooters. Now, in 1965, um, it looks like there were some regulations that could have affected the gun industry, and that's when they started thinking about diversifying. It's important to diversify. Uh, so they started getting into camping and fishing gear at that year. So, uh, and, and they saw the benefits of being diversified. And that's one of the things about this company. Even on the most difficult years, Brunel has been able to really do pretty well. Example, last year you must have heard that the industry as a whole was 40% down. And even those that were doing excellent or well, they were 20% down. Uh, Brunel's, last year we did an acquisition in Ohio and we broke even. So that tells you that being so diversified, actually, it was a good strategy that started back in the 60s. Uh, in 1969, the Gunsmith Kings is compiled by Frank and, uh, and, 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 and Bob. And this is the one I was telling you is the compilation of a lot of uh, articles uh, with knowledge and they have had various revisions. 1973, this facility started just with the center part, and that was 16,000 square feet. And then later on, uh, we had another um, extension, the one that you see on the right-hand side, 
and then the other one on the left and more on the back. So right now it's about 120,000 uh, square feet. And uh, in 2012, we realized that was not enough again. So, but everybody is very familiar with this facility. It was branded Brunel's. Right now it has been rebranded to Crow Shooting Supply, which is our wholesale division, and we'll get uh, how we acquired that company. So, following the, the sequence of events, in 1976, uh, Bob and Frank contributed to the uh, Mauser Bowl Action Rifles published uh, at that time. Um, in 1977, we introduced Agra, Agra Glass Gel, which was one of those things that uh, uh, they, the Brunel's family modified to make it better with the manufacturer. And even today is one of the best uh, products uh, that still sell. I mentioned about the 1980s, uh, we created the Brunel's Gun Techs, and that has been a key aspect of our company. No other company have uh, uh, that many people with that much experience as Brunel's. We advise senior gunsmiths in the industry. 1983, uh, Bob moved to the chairman of the board, and unfortunately, 1991, um, he passed away, leaving a, a, a legacy. Uh, they always, and even today, we always think about the communities we operate. We always want to support the communities. Uh, even the decisions, as you may seem not that uh, relevant, but do we offer food service in, in our facility? Are we going to compete with restaurants in, in the community? How are we going to affect them, the community? So all those decisions always stay in consideration the community. <coughs> Third generation, Pete, uh, <clears throat> he joins uh, the company in 1997, and Pete had a vision that there was another area that was growing, that was the electronic internet. And from what I heard, he kind of developed that project on his own. And when he went to his dad, he says, hey dad, uh, guess what? This is already producing some sales. And he was, oh, okay. So he was, I think, expecting some resistance, but once he showed that it was, it was working. And as you can see, uh, this was the first uh, in internet uh, website, uh, very rudimentary. Uh, and this is the current one uh, right now, but definitely it has the, uh, it, it was the, a great uh, decision at that time. Other things that we have done in 2005, uh, we launched the uh, military law enforcement catalog. In 2005, also, we bought the Big Springs, which is the range, and also has some uh, 700 plus acres of upland for hunting area as well. And we tried to preserve it uh, for, for, for that purpose. In 2006, uh, the Army was requiring um, a third round magazine, and the ones that were in the market were not as reliable as they, they needed to be. And Brunel's, with their development, they were able to, to uh, secure a large contract because these magazines were really successful and reliable. So one of the, 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 the greatest uh, uh, accomplishments. And as you can see, we have all kinds of uh, catalogs, 1911 in 2007, AR-15, M16. In 2008, we made the decision to have our own photo and video shop um, also in 2008, we were the first ones to create a website that you can actually explode all the uh, blueprints and, uh, and order the parts specifically. Nobody had that online. And that was very, very successful and very progressive at that time. Uh, in, 19, uh, in 2009, then we put kind of the uh, similar application where you can add all those parts to create an AR-15. So we call it the AR-15 builder. In 2009, we recognized that cell phones were really the future of the internet. Nobody wanted to go into a desktop kind of anymore. And right now, as you can see, a lot of uh, vendors always trying to, to create an application that works really well in cell phones, not just in desktops. We recognized that back in 2009. 
and we created that application as well. Now, you can grow internally, or you can um, select some acquisitions that are critical for the, for the company. And here are some of the most important um, acquisitions, or the, most, or the only acquisitions at this time. In 2007, we realized that the precision shooter was a great sector to be in and be re represented. And we needed to really get into that. This company, Sinclair, had developed a lot of equipment and their culture and their quality was really in line with, with Brunel's. So we decided to make that acquisition. And until now, uh, we have the rights for the Sinclair brand and we sell uh, Sinclair products in, in our website and we bought the company Integrate Employees. In 2011, it was a great move to go into wholesale. And at that time, it was a difficult decision to do because some of, our, of the customers of, of cross shooting supply like Shields and all that could see that, well, you're gonna benefit Brunel's because we cannot compete with Brunel's in that sense. But understanding that really Brunel's have been in support of the industry as well, and we're being, we're being really uh, honest and open about our strategies with our customers, uh, it, has, it has been a really successful business. So we are the only company in the, in, the, in the sector that has a wholesale and then has a direct, both models. Usually a wholesaler only sells to other shops. We are able to maintain good business relationship because of the honesty and, and, and the practice that we have established and the name that we have established in the industry. We're not here to, to just grow Brunel's. Actually, we're gonna maybe get a little bit into, into that at the end. But Pete believes in what is called self-actualization. Self-actualization uh, was defined by Maslow, a psychologist, that he believed, well, he did a study saying people's behavior are motivated by needs. And it comes from the more, uh, most uh, basic ones, which is the physiological, you need to eat, shelter, and all that. And once you satisfy that, you go into safety. Safety at home, safety at school, safety at work. And then it goes into relationships. We need to belong to, to groups. We also uh, need self-esteem, a pat in the back. At the top, when you satisfy all that, all that is self-actualization. means we want to develop all our potential as individuals. Maybe military terms, be all you can be. So we believe that we cannot grow Brunel's if we cannot grow the employees. And we cannot grow Brunel's if we cannot grow the industry. So Brunel's supports the employees. I think it's the easiest company I've been to do HR because they're really employee uh, uh, driven in their decisions. And, and we really have a robust um, tuition reimbursement and education and training program because we wanna develop people's potential. So, 2011, we had a wholesale. 2015, we also realized that um, gun clubs were a wasn't a strategic uh, business. They consume a lot of ammunition. Ammunition right now is about 18% of, of our sales. So uh, definitely uh, going to one of the main uh, consumers of that was a, a, a great strategic move. And in 2015, we realized that Camille that was the main business, gun clubs. And, uh, and that solidified our, our offering in uh, ammunition. 2017, before 2016, you could only put a, a gun together with every single part. And 2016, we decided to sell branded uh, guns, Glock, Colt, and all this but we couldn't go directly to the manufacturers because the manufacturers are very traditional um, industry where they have specific uh, distributors, very rarely they increase. And Bumbler had been in the industry for 40 years and he had relationships, direct relationships with the main manufacturers uh, uh, of guns. 
So we talked with uh, Jack and we talked with the manufacturers and they honor basically the relationship to be transferred to Brunel's. And now we have direct relationship with manufacturers, which provides another support for the industry because we are so much in contact with the, with the customer that we can tell the manufacturers, this is what the customers want. So maybe you should be considering your new designs, um, these this elements. So those are our strategic uh, uh, acquisitions. Internationally, we are in 13 countries. We don't own the business there but it's a partnership where we support, uh, well, we find a partner and we support them in two aspects. The technology, we create their website and compliance. We are the only company that has a full staff of compliance, national and international. And it's very complicated. And if you don't do things right, I mean, it could be catastrophic in that sense. So we are the only ones who can do this business. We know what is allowed, what is not allowed, what kind of steps you have to do in order to export and all that. So basically, let's say uh, France, Brunel's.fr is gonna look like this. Uh, everything in French, of course. But the website would identify what kind of accessories or guns or parts are allowed to be exported to friends, and that will filter that. So that customers will order and directly go into our distribution center and gets fulfilled with all the permits and everything that needs to, to be done. So we're in 13 countries uh, so far, and this is still about 5% of uh, our business uh, at this point. Well, it's a third generation business, and so far, how did we do it? With three simple S, selection, service, satisfaction. 90,000 uh, parts and accessories, uh, service like no other. We have a dedicated professional people always listening to the customer, resolving their problems, giving them support, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Whatever it takes to satisfy our, our customers. Now, in 2016, we did a, a brand study with all our customers. So we identified what was important for them. And then we did an internal with our employees. Tell us why are we important to our customers? Why do we exist? You have contact with our customers. I mean, even in your, in, in your society and everything. You tell us why we're here. And about 60 employees responded with different uh, statements. We put it all around a, a wall. And the executive team with Pete, uh, we did what we call uh, wordsmithing. In other words, we're trying to simplify, but get the answers, essence of all those comments. And we believe that Brunel's exists. The, the purpose of the Arbery Sixth is because we empower the spirit of independence and adventure. For some people, it is the ability to be in the outdoors. For some people, it's just the independence. And some people even relate that to the Second uh, Amendment uh, for that purpose. But we are here because we enable people to identify with uh, independence and adventure. So uh, currently, uh, uh, Pete is our CEO, and Frank is the chairman of the board of directors, and, um, and this is the, the state of the business as of today. But let's talk a little bit about our future growth. This facility in Grinnell was created um, maybe just the same as, as in Montezuma, thinking of the next 30 years. And just to give you a perspective, it's at 245,000 square feet. 200,000 square feet are warehouse. But if you visit our facility, only half is utilized with conveyors and, and products. The other half is pretty much storage. And we actually have tested the system. Uh, normally we do about 6,000 to 8,000 uh, um, 
orders per day. Uh, the first quarter of this year, we were able to do 10,000. We had to have an additional seasonal 50 employees. Uh, about 95 employees from the office went to work there. We kind of stopped what we're doing and just to support fulfillment and of course the customer. And, but we tested the, the equipment and we were able to ship an average of 10,000 orders per day, first quarter. So if you really think of that, that's just half of the facility, so we can duplicate that capacity to 20,000. Uh, the office is 38,000, but we still have 8,000 that has not been utilized. It's just an empty space, and some people use it just to walk every day and all that in the offices. The retail store is 7,000. I, I mentioned that we're going to quadruple that. And if this is not enough, we have enough room to double the facility. So that would quadruple our current capacity. So I think we have a lot of years ahead to continue to grow in, in this facility in Grinnell. So, uh, just to give you another statistics, uh, the gun techs and the customer service receive daily 2,500 to 3,000 calls. Just to give you uh, an idea of, of, of the system over here the warehousing system. We already talked about the retail store. Uh, that was a, a, a unique uh, destination place, and it was really well received, uh, not only by our customers, but even by the industry. Our business model, I think I already described that wholesale is business to business. Uh, Brunel's is called direct marketing to consumers and retailers, and business to consumer, as in the retail. Those are our three business models, and they are approached differently. This is our market segmentation. Before 2015, we used to segment the market in 39 segments, uh, from the precision shooter, to the hunter, to the law enforcement, um, gunsmith, and it was getting too complicated because you use different language, different uh, venues for advertising. And we got together and said, okay, who are our customers in a more simplified way to communicate with them? We realized there are only three. The experts, which that's how the company started, gunsmiths, law enforcement, Navy, Army people. And, but that's one billion dollars uh, industry. Uh, there are about 300,000 uh, customers, and we have 30,000 of those active. But the greatest uh, potential is the novice, the one that doesn't know but have some interest to start. But sometimes uh, you get intimidated on, on, on this terminology that is so foreign to you. But uh, we're always trying a way to, to communicate in simple terms. That's the reason why the retail store exists today. That's a $9 billion potential sector. That's where the growth can come. There are about 20 million customers. We have about 250,000 of them. Those are 2017 numbers. And in between, somebody that already uh, knows something about 1911s or r 15 or reloading or something, they're called the enthusiasts, which usually start with something and goes into another area of expertise. That's kind of half midway, uh, four billion. There are about potentially five million customers, and we have 450,000 of them. So as you can see, uh, we can still grow, but the industry has to grow. Our employees have to grow as well. The challenge with growth especially in a family business, is to still be one company, one culture, one family, as we say. And we approach that in, in a way that we have core values. And we always, when we do acquisitions, we're very careful about the cultures because there's a marriage of cultures. So we have to be really aligned to, to do that. So we always talk about this is one company. This is one culture, 
And when we have a new acquisition, it's very important that we share the values, the same values. But we can have many brands, and that's how we re uh, were presented to, to our customers. But to end this, uh, this journey, I would like you to, to listen to the owners and our employees, what they say about our company. So allow me to present this small video. My favorite thing about working at Brownells is that every day has a new adventure, a new, new problem to solve, or a new opportunity to chase, to see just how it's going to fit into the larger mosaic of development for our people or for our business. That's always fun and exciting. I think everybody gets a chance to experience that. Iowa does not have the NBA or NFL, but we have Brownells, and they are known nationwide. It's when your passion meets your profession, um, and that's, that's a completely unique experience. For me here at Brownells. Brownells is an ESGR certified company. Uh, the employer is support of Guard and Reserve. Recognizing Brownells as a military friendly company and knowing that when I came here to start working was a great thing. Our crews, our family, all these people here, uh, you know, God love them. They are really considered as individuals. There's no numbers, you know, that kind of nonsense. It's great to see familiar faces and crack a joke with somebody or ask how their kids are or, you know, keep up with them as you would your own kids. I chose to work here at Brown Nails because it is family oriented and that family comes first for me also. There's not a lot of organizations that you get to work for of this size that are still uh, family owned, third generation family owned, and that certainly adds a different dynamic to the, to the environment. Family, my gosh. Bob started it, his son Frank's chairman of the board, his son Pete's CEO. Three generations. It doesn't get much more family than that. No matter what you're doing, you're delivering upon a dream of that customer. Be it a, a father taking his daughter out for that first hunt, or that mother who wants to learn self-protection. You're delivering with every order, with every transaction, the ability for that person to fulfill an adventure, fulfill a dream. We deliver upon a promise to get somebody outdoors experiencing the world in a much different light than they may experience uh, staying in and doing a different sport. Our sports are adventure sports, and we're an adventure brand. So I want you to all come, join the adventure, join the family, and develop yourself. And this is Brunel's today. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Generation. Does Pete have children? Yes, have yes. <laughs> I think they are. I think the, the oldest just went to college um, uh, this year, and there are other uh, kids in the family. So, most likely, there will be a fourth generation. Yeah. When they first got started, there wasn't this much of a advertisement for salts. Are the salts used in a gun? Yes. Yes, for bluing and all that. Yes, those those are the the what chemicals. Is, is the color that the the gun has to protect from rusting. Um, so that's that's what it is for. And actually, the Brunel's products are so well known that some of the training we provide in gunsmithing schools is about our products um, because they actually produce a really high end. Um, high-end result. That's how Bob got to be known in the industry at the beginning, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. What about these plastic guns that are coming out? Well, <laughs> are they really guns? That's the first question. Because uh, it would be very dangerous to create a gun out of plastic and try to fire uh, an ammunition out of that. So. And the regulation says that the gun, uh, in order to be considered a gun, it has to have uh, some detectable parts, enough metal to, to be detected. So technically speaking, there wouldn't be guns. Functionally speaking, it would be really dangerous to try to fire something like that. So I think it's more of the perception that you can create a gun out of a 3D plastic material uh, even the guns that are manufactured recently, you really think about it, the, the barrel 
and, and the really internal parts, uh, they are not made out of uh, plastic. Most of the time, they, I mean, there's heavy metal involved. So it's just part of <laughs> the perception that, that they are guns. I mean, there are 3D representations as it could be a flower arrangement or something like that created by, that, by a printer. Police Academy. So I went to that two years ago and I had fired an AR-15. Mm -hmm. Do you know if your company supplied our police department with those guns? Uh, we, did, we do help the, a lot of police departments, not only the local ones, uh, with accessories, with training, with all that. Specifically, if, if they provided those AR-15, I don't have a specific knowledge of what. But I can tell you that um, there are even a lot of organizations, veterans, that they have recognized us for being their supporters from day one when nobody else would support them. Uh, so now they're successful organizations, but they recognize that, that definitely um, uh, Brunel's have played a great part. And I can tell you because I went to an Alice training for active shooting in Grinnell. Uh, when the police uh, uh, officers realized that you're from Brunel's, you can actually feel that uh, familiarity of, uh, oh, we, we know your company, thank you for being here. I was there this time or that time because of this or that. So uh, it's, a, it's a small community and like I said, we always try to support in any way we can. Sometimes I just get a referral from Pete saying, please help uh, this organization for, in this way and we participate. Uh, we have participated with the Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, in a lot of different areas, uh, education, uh, um, and th uh, we, we, we do a lot of things for, for the community. So most likely, uh, uh, if you ask them in particular how Brunel's has helped you, I, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to, to tell you something about us. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's been a lot of talk about what they call smart guns, <clears throat> where you can actually um, either use fingerprint or something else so that only one person can fire that gun. To be honest, I don't know that much about it, so that would be hard for me to, to speak of something like that. Well, was it a I, I'm not a gun expert to begin with, and that's one of the nice things about Brunel's, because a long time ago, uh, actually, uh, the priest in my, in my church asked me, you know, do you only hire people that are in agreement with <laughs> the Second Amendment and all that, and the sector? I said, no. I have people that have no interest. And, and, even if you don't agree, we'll hire you, you do the job. So I don't claim to be an expert. Uh, a lot of people in my team have never fired a gun, uh, but, um, but if you want, I can refer you to one of the gunsmiths that will be able to, to answer uh, that question around, properly. It hasn't been promoted, but it's, it's so that if there's a gun loose, only the owner can fire it. That would be a great feature, to be honest. I mean, just as a personal perspective. Yeah, Remington. I didn't know. You see? I think Remington had it, and then they, that got stressed. And... I didn't know that. You know more than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> Where is Grinnell? Besides Grinnell? Where is it? We're in Ohio and North Carolina, and those are distribution centers, basically. But in and Grinnell? In Grinnell, we're right off the 80 on 149. Okay. If you exit, uh, we're right there, the, well, the biggest... <laughs> it's, 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 a lake or it's, uh, it's a little pond, yeah. A pond. Yeah. And that's where you have... 146, sorry. Uh, that's Thank where you, you have your um, uh, store also? Yes, the retail is there, and the direct distribution center is there. Montezuma, which used to be the only facility we had at one time, that's for the wholesale. So in other words... Montezuma does large orders for um, big, big stores and pallets and all that, whereas the other is just little things. Yeah.